We, we mentioned The Wrestler a little bit, the mm-hmm. movie. You saw it. Yes. What'd you think? I thought it was good. I thought Mickey Rourke was great. The movie is good. You've talked to Mickey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he said I boxed Rick and I've you know, been around, but I didn't realize what you guys go through day to day to, to be as good as you, know, as you were. But Did, you, I, he won me over right away. He's a very respectful guy. One thing that is clear in that movie is the toll that the business can take on your body. Mm-hmm. Do you think people understand that? No. They have no idea. It does take a toll. Hard physically, hard mentally, and it takes a special kind of person to do it. But um, I don't think the average person understands that. But at the same time, I don't run into that conversation of not respecting us at all anymore. I, you know, that's the odd question. Your, um, your body has been through a lot. Mm-hmm. And you still, I mean... I'm ready to go. <laughs> Vince. <laughs> <laughs> there is still that pull. Yeah. There's the desire yes. to keep doing it. Mm-hmm. No, not to, I don't have a desire to wrestle, but I like being part of the show. I like the guys that know that I could still do it if I had to. But they all they know that about me. I love the guys, and I love um, I love when they invite me back to Raw. You have been um, another thing that I kind of saw in, and I, I think some people approach that movie without watching wrestling for years, as as I did, you know, when I was a kid and everything. Um, but I think one thing that also came through is 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 the friendships and the kinships mm-hmm. behind the scenes. Um, when you're getting ready or on the road or whatever else. Um, you were always thought of as a very generous wrestler. Mm-hmm. You could be in the ring with somebody who wasn't as good as you were, mm-hmm. and you still put a show on. Yeah, and I didn't, you know, we talked about it earlier, I didn't dwell on that. Um, you know, not everybody's got the same level of abilities, not everybody's got the same gifts physically, but um, my commitment, like anybody that, is successful in our business. My commitment to have the best match, no matter how long I had to be out there, never went away. It didn't matter who I was wrestling. But the guys that are successful in my business, in our sport, um, had that same mindset. I'm not the only one. I just was really probably more intense than anybody. I Del- just wouldn't accept me. I wanted to be you know, a doctor. If I'd been a doctor, I would have wanted to be the best doctor. Whatever I chose wrestling, I just wanted to be the best 24-7. WWE was the second most searched term on Yahoo. It was the second most searched term on Yahoo behind only Britney Spears, ahead of Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. Does that surprise you? No. I'm surprised Britney Spears is out there. <laughs> Who's Britney You're bigger Spears? than Britney Spears. Yeah, we are. Are you kidding me? It's yeah, huge. I know it, is. it is huge business. Mm-hmm. Over in Europe, we're like the Beatles. It's unbelievable. I need to take you on a 10 day tour, Jeff. You just tell your wife, you know, I'm going to go with Ric Flair, the nature boy, for 10 days. And you come back and you'll be able to do the greatest 30-minute CBS <laughs> news, even of your life. I don't think my wife or the viewers want to see me in tights. <laughs> you can still pull you, it off. You just need, no, I can't right now either. I've got some cosmetic issues myself. But just need to take you for 10 days with the WWE. It's the greatest show on earth. It's unbelievable. It still seems like you're in pretty good shape. Yeah, I try, I try to I weigh myself every day. Just remember how much I weighed the day I retired. And I refuse to let myself get out of shape. And I, my, my kids won't let me. There's the pull. Um, your sport has dealt with it. Baseball's dealt with other sports. The performance enhancing drugs. Mm-hmm. Because there's the constant pull to look as good as you can. Mm-hmm. Um, how prevalent is that in wrestling? And how has it changed over the years? Well, it's, gosh, it's been a part of every sport, and you know, I'm not going to sit here and deny it that it hasn't happened in wrestling, but we test right now. I mean, when they say we test, we're not doing, we do it so much more intense than baseball, basketball, or football. You know, first time is about a month suspension without pay, second time is two months, and third time you're gone, or something like that. I'm not sure what, what it might have changed in the last year, but. You know, all you can do in any level of, of a sport like that is say, these are the mandates, this is how we have to live, because nobody makes you do anything. It's individual choice. When you watch today, um, what kind of excites you the most, or what? Well, what excites you, I mean, I'm, I, have those, I have three really close friends, Dave Batista, Hunter, and Sean, that I love watching what they're doing. And of course, I really like The Undertaker a lot, the character, and. I like big. I like all the guys, but I've got three or four guys that I really 
I stayed close to, and I'd always watch what they're doing, you know, um, and what role they're playing, what, what, you know, what part of the show they're in. And, you know, it's just a memory. It's just, when you do something for 35 years, it's hard to just walk away and say goodbye to it all. You know, I miss that. I don't miss the 12 hour days getting ready for live TV, but I miss the, the four hours of the live TV or two hours of live TV and a couple hours before and after. Can you describe what kind of rush it was to be there in that ring? Well, it's, it's second to none. I mean, I, I've told everybody when Ray Stevens, when I first broke into business, Ray Stevens said to me, I said, God, I'm pretty nervous. And then he said, they are not nervous. You don't belong in there, you know? So you're always nervous. It's live TV. It's anywhere from 10 to 20,000, sometimes 70,000, 75,000, depending on what the pay-per-view. Like at my retirement, there was 77,000 at WrestleMania in Orlando. It's just that, uh, you know, you walk out that door and you try to be everything that they think you are. And there was a time in my life when I knew I owned them, you know what I mean? I knew when I walked out that door they were mine. It didn't matter if there was 200 or 20,000 or 70,000. As I got older, I lost sight of that. But I mean, the real top performers know when they walk out the door, they've got them. It's just like when Elvis came through the curtain. Elvis knew every chick there was going. <laughs> I mean, so we know, you know, if you're really good at what you do, you know, and that there's nothing like that rush of knowing that you own your audience. You could still do it? Oh, yeah, I could do it. Now they won't let me. I can talk my way through anything. They just won't let me wrestle. <laughs> the woo's never going to die, man. <laughs> the woo, I love. Well, where did the woo come from? I got that from Jerry Lee Lewis driving down the road one day. Uh, Reckon this the race is great balls of fire, woo. <laughs> And you just started saying it. Started, and at the end of every interview, I said, go woo. And now I got the whole world doing woo, and I'm not getting paid enough for it. <laughs> you, Will Ferrell's doing woo on, <laughs> on, on some HBO special now, and wearing my sunglasses. Um, I, I think what's, what, what, what fascinates me partially is that um, you were the quintessential bad guy, and yet I sit here and talk to you, and everybody else does, and you're one of the best guys around. Well, that's always my favorite thing is to know me, is to love me, but I was really good at being a bad guy. I like that role. Not being bad to people, just talking bad, you know. Talking Acting, trash. Talking trash, yeah. Yeah. But that's all, what, it, bring, it, that's it, what it brings the viewers. It came natural, yeah. It was just a, it's a gift. And I, people say, I used to write that down for you. I said, write it down for me. I was thinking about it in the taxi from the, from the airport to the Marriott to, to TV. <laughs> You know, or whatever I experienced the night before, or I heard on a song, or whatever. I just, you know, um, I was just so excited about being Ric Flair and, and being a wrestler that I couldn't wait to get in front of the live camera. I can see the scar tissue on your forehead. Mm -hmm. How many times has your forehead been cut? Mm -hmm. How many times have I wrestled? Probably, who knows. Um, thousands of times? Oh, thousands of times, yeah. And you still bleed? Mm -hmm. The best. You're proud of your bleeding. I'm ability. proud of it. Yeah. <laughs> you bleed like nobody else. I bleed like nobody else. <laughs> Red is green. <laughs> as, we, as we know, you still have some of the wild nights, um, but but those wild times where it was just, I mean, it was you were out all night drinking and then mm -hmm. you showed up for. Mm -hmm. Well, it was just a way of life for us. It wasn't like um, it wasn't you know, it wasn't like an effort. <laughs> just. <laughs> I went to see a shrink in 89 when I was like having confidence issues, you know, and the guy, you know, they'd start they'd asking the fundamental questions. And by the time the hour was up, he was laying on the couch. You know, when, when he asked me how much I drank, you know, and said, a couple beers, no, like five beers a day, no, no maybe six, maybe on a short trip, <laughs> like maybe 10 or 15 beers a day, 300 miles, I mean. Yeah, seven days a week, and how many days he wrestled, 365 days a year, twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday, he was laying on the couch. <laughs> I was going, doctor, I, it's okay. <laughs> I, I honestly, I, I'm not sure that I can think of anybody who's put more miles on his body, literally yeah. and figuratively. Than the you. knee, there's nobody alive. <laughs> Airplanes, trains, and automobiles. <laughs> Alcohol. Alcohol, <laughs> yeah, beer, yep. I saw the photo of you sitting in the hallway with your head in your hands after one of your last events. In Japan. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. It was in Japan. 
What were you thinking at that time? That I'd been there 64 times and would never, probably never come back. Was that tough? Mm hmm The whole, um, <laughs> the whole couple months buildup was hard for me. To the retirement? Mm-hmm. Good though, not bad. It was all good. It's just a hard thing to buy. It's still hard. I know you're going to ask me that. You caught me off guard. <laughs> you gave so much. Um, yeah, yeah, I did, but the business gave me so much. The business really gave me a lot. I didn't get nearly, I didn't give nearly as much as it gave me. Do anything over again if you could? No, I might have made a few different decisions. Um, but how could I do anything over and end up like I've ended up now? I mean, I've had just the greatest ride and the greatest time, and I'm retired for a year and still close to the guys going back. I just went back for the first time. I'm going back to the Hall of Fame. Good. You caught me off guard. See, I don't we're doing this. It's okay. 